In this video we're going to talk about activity-based costing. I think it's best that we just jump right into an example of an actual firm and why activity-based costing would be useful. So let's say that you start a company that makes bicycles and skateboards. You manufacture them, uh, you sell them to bike shops, to skate shops, uh, so that's what you do with your company. And let's say that in the past uh, when you think about allocating your manufacturing overhead, which I'll just abbreviate here, so your manufacturing overhead, you would just say, okay, well, we'll just allocate that based on something like uh, machine hours. So you'll just say whatever your, your manufacturing overhead is, uh, so let's say it's X, and you just divide that by the number of machine hours, and then you get a certain amount per machine hours, $13 a machine hour, something like that. And each time uh, you have machine hours, you go ahead and you allocate that uh, to the products that you're making. But but there's a thing here that, that bears mentioning is, okay, so machine hours is just one measure of what might drive overhead, right? There are a lot of things that might have an effect on your overhead that have nothing to do uh, with the number of machine hours, right? We just pick machine hours because it's just an easy, uh, just an easy proxy, right? Just something we can just plug in and say, let's do this. But what if there were four, five, or 10 things that were driving manufacturing overhead? And what if, uh, your product costs were actually also driven uh, by things like you know SG&A, customer support, things that don't fall into manufacturing overhead, uh, but nonetheless, you know you might have more customer support costs for the bicycles uh, than you would for for the skateboards. Maybe the people with the bicycles that you sell them to, they they complain more about the quality of the bicycles, and that's driving more of these costs. Which in a traditional costing system, we wouldn't be allocating that. Uh, because SG&A costs or period costs are not part of manufacturing overhead. So activity-based costing, uh, what, we're, what we're doing is we're going to say, okay, well, we're going to take um, all the overhead in step one of acti activity-based costing, implementing the system. We're going to take all the overhead. Now, this overhead uh, can include, this could be you know, manufacturing overhead, and it could also be SG&A type overhead, right? Like those customer support costs. We're just going to take it all, we're going to dump it in this bucket here, right? And we'll say that it's two, uh, $2.5 million, right? So that's that's what you've you've got for your firm. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you could actually break it out and say, okay, well, we're actually going to have two separate lines here. We're going to have one for manufacturing overhead and then one for SG&A, and, and, and we'll do that separately. In this case, I'm just going to make it simple. We're going to lump them both in and say we've got uh, $2,500,000 here, okay? So this is the overhead. This is what we want to be allocating. And in the past, we just have that, that one plant-wide rate, right, based on machine hours, labor hours, something like that, that has to do with the manufacturing overhead. But with activity-based costing, we're actually going to come up with multiple rates, uh, which is really the core difference uh, between traditional costing and, and ABC. So now that we've got what, what our overhead bucket is here, we need to create something uh, called cost pools. And with cost pools, what, what we're essentially doing, let, let me actually hold off and going down there. We're actually saying out of this two and a half million dollars, how does this break out in terms of different activities that are actually driving this overhead, right? We know it's not just machine hours, so what is it? So let's say that we think about this, we interview our employees and we find that there are multiple things. And, and one thing is assembly, right? So as we assemble units, as we assemble bicycles and, and skateboards, uh, we're incurring some overhead. And so that's one of the drivers of that, that two and a half million dollars. And beyond assembly, we say, well, actually when we've assembled the unit, uh, we have to process the orders. Right, so we've got some processing of the orders. Uh, that's actually going to drive some of the overhead. And then we've got uh, support costs. And that, and that we're talking about the customer support. People are complaining. That might not be manufacturing, uh, but that is something that we want to take into consideration when we're costing out these bicycles and, the, and these skateboards. And then we'll have a fourth category where we just say, well, this is this is other. This is actually things that really aren't. Uh, fitting into these categories, maybe it's something like the lease on the factory uh, where we actually manufacture the bikes and the, and the skateboards. So these are called cost pools, right? So what it is is we're saying that this big bucket, that two and a half million dollars, goes into these different pools, right? So it's going to be divvied up among those four pools. And now, actually, I've, I've wrote out a little table here. And, and this is basically has the same information as, as above right here. We've got those four cost pools. We've just got them assembly, 
processing, support, and other. Those are our four cost pools. And now we're just going to basically dump this two and a half million dollars. We're going to spread it across these four pools, right? That that's what we're going to be doing now. And that's actually known as the first stage allocation. Right, there are actually going to be two stages, and we'll get into the second stage in our second video. The first stage allocation is we're taking this two and a half million dollars and spreading it across the four cost pools. Now you say, well, how do we do that? How do we know how much is in assembly, how much is processing, and so forth? Well, again, we have to interview our employees and say, okay, what percent of this overhead uh, do you think has to do with actually assembling the units, has to do with processing the orders, and so forth? And so we're going to come up with percentages. And then we're going to use those percentages uh, to actually calculate the numbers that are going to go in this first stage allocation. So let's say that after interviewing people, you found that assembly really accounts for 60% of this overhead. And then processing the orders, uh, that's about 10%. And then support would be 25%. And then this other category is, is 5%. Right now, again, the, th this is your cost system at your firm. You design it how you feel is appropriate. You might have an additional cost pool that's not in here, or you might not have one of these. Depends on what you feel is relevant. And you just basically get this information from your employees. So it's sub subjective in that sense, but it's going to be more accurate than just saying, well, let's just take machine hours, right? So we're looking at all these activities and how they drive uh, the cost in this overhead bucket. So now we just say, okay, well, we've got 60% as assembly. So we take 60% of $2.5 million, and we're going to put that right here. So that's going to be, if you do the math, we've got $1,500,000. Again, that's just that, 60% of the $2.5 million. Okay? Now, we've got this other thing here. You might be wondering, well, what is this activity measure? Why do I have that written in there? Well, we've got our activity assembling units. And then we've got the amount of cost that is going to come into the assembly of the units. But we're going to, we're ultimately shooting for a rate, right, which we're going to get into. That's our kind of our, our last step in this video. I don't want to get ahead of myself too much. But to have a rate, we need to have some kind of measure, right? We're going to need to say, okay, we've got here's a cost we've dumped into this bucket. But cost according to what? Well, assembly, the costs in that assembly are driven, in our opinion, by the amount of units that we actually assemble, right? If we assemble more bicycles and more skateboards, we're going to have more assembly overhead costs, right? So we just say, okay, well, we're just going to take this $1.5 million, but we need to have some kind of, to get a rate ultimately, which is what we're shooting for, uh, we need some kind of measure uh, of how we go about calculating these costs. And we'll say, okay, well, we plan uh, to produce, let's say, 500,000 units. And when I say units, what we're talking about is the number of bicycles and skateboards, right? So we're saying, okay, we've got this 1.5 million, and then we're going to spread it across the, the 500,000 uh, units, right? Now, with processing, now we're at our next cost pool. We're just going to follow the same process. We're going to say, okay, well, we, we know that we talked to our employees is 10% of that $2.5 million is going to go here in our first stage allocation. That's how much you get dumped in that bucket. And that's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay, so this is we're saying two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of that overhead has to do and is driven by our employees processing the orders. So how would we go about thinking about a measure for processing those orders? Well, we can say, well, the number of orders, right? The number of orders that we have, if we have more orders, we're gonna have more overhead costs related to processing those orders, right? So we'll just say, okay, well. Uh, we'll go ahead and say how many orders we're going to have, and then we'll use that to calculate our rate later. And so let's say we say, well, you know what? We think we're going to have 1,000 orders. Okay, so we just plug that in right here. So now our customer support cost is next. That's our next cost pool. We just follow the same plan. We say, okay, look, we, we've talked to our employees. 25% of this amount here of that $2.5 has to do, it's driven by customer support costs. So we multiply that out, and we get 625000 And again, that's just 25% of that $2.5 million. Right? So now we need an activity measure uh, for the customer support costs. So we might think of a lot of different ways that we measure how, well, how, how would customer support costs be driven, maybe by the number of emails that we get from customers, maybe by the number of phone calls. We'll just say by the number of customers. 
right? We'll just say that that's an easy way to count, and we'll say, okay, there's there's 200 customers, and so the more customers there are, the more customer support costs there will be related to overhead. Okay. Now with our final cost pool, this other, again, we talked about this other is just this five percent of this two and a half million and we're saying that that really doesn't fit into any of our other cost pools that might be the lease on the factory or something like that uh, and it's, it's we're just going to calculate that out and say it's $125,000 and then we're not going to have an activity activity measure so I've just got NA here because because that's not important actually we're, we're really not going to even even be focusing on this uh, that's not relevant to us it's something we don't want to be thinking about because we don't really think is a cost driver uh, in the sense of something we can measure uh, with a rate. So now we can say, okay, step three, and I, I should have said, so this first stage allocation, going ahead and, and, and finding how much to dump in each of those buckets, right? We're basically taking that two and a half million and spreading it across those four cost pools. That's, that's technically step two, right? So now step three is we're actually going to calculate our activity rate. So again, now you see we're going to have multiple rates here, right? We're going to have multiple different rates. We're not just going to have one plant-wide overhead rate that says, okay, $13 a machine hour, whatever it is. We're actually going to have multiple rates and then apply those uh, based on these different activities. So now we just say that this is actually a pretty simple part. We just say, okay, how much do we allocate in the first stage allocation, right? How much of this bucket went down here? All right, so we've got 1.5 million, and then we just divide that by the number of units. All right, so that's going to come out to three dollars a unit. That's our activity rate for assembly overhead costs. Right now, when we think of of the processing, we again just take uh, this number and divide it by this number. We have 250,000 uh, divided by a thousand orders. And that's going to be 250 dollars an order. And then now for support, we just take the 625,000 and divide it by 200 customers, and that's going to give us $3,125 per customer. And then, of course, now we don't have any kind of activity measure for other, so we really don't want to even be thinking about that, so we'll just say NA, because when we go to do our activity-based costing and we use the rates, uh, we really want to be looking at these three cost pools right here and how they drive the costs that end up in this big bucket uh, of two and a half million dollars. Now you can see that because we've got multiple activity measures, because we said, well, actually, let's look at what really drives that two and a half million dollars. Let's look at the assembly. Let's look at the processing. Let's look at the support. Since we're doing this, we're going to come up with more precise, more accurate cost numbers uh, when we think of the different product lines, when we think of costing out how much it is to produce a bicycle, how much it is to produce um, a, a skateboard, uh, than we would if we just did traditional costing and used that one rate of, based on machine hours or labor hours. Now, again, bear in mind, uh, we're allocating overhead here now, right? Now, even though it includes SG&A and we're not just talking about manufacturing overhead, uh, this is not counting for things like direct materials and direct labor. So there's actually more costs uh, that are going to be involved than just what we're talking about with the activity rate. But those costs are traceable directly to the bicycles, directly to the skateboards. So we don't need to allocate those. What we're trying to do is take those difficult to measure costs that end up in this overhead bucket and say, can we find more precise rates to go ahead and measure them so we can allocate them to the products?